Hey friends, David here from Learn Stage Lighting, and every once in a while I'm sitting here avoiding some work that I know I should be doing, um, you know, trolling the Onyx Facebook groups to find uh, some of those common questions that we get from people all the time. And one of those that we get a lot is how do I make a light basically move in black is what it's called. Like I want to take a light um, and I basically want it, I'm going to zoom in here super close so we can see lights and moving. Um, I basically want it to move into place and then turn on. So what we're not doing here is who wants to be a millionaire, right? Um, though, actually, a sequence like that does actually use a fair amount of move in black. It's just we'd have to use a different move in black function to make that work. You know what? Let's talk about it. Move in Black is uh, a console function, but I would argue it's not always what you need to do use when you're programming a Move in Black look. And so the crux of the problem is this, right? If we go to a, a fresh bank here, and um, we go ahead and we grab one of our groups. How about these guys? Sure, why not? Um, and we take these guys, and we bring them up to full. And, oh, that's interesting. There's a gobo on the highlight palette for those. Whatever. Um, we bring those to full, and then we go ahead, and right now they're at 50-50 at the home position, but we're going to take them somewhere new, such as the lead singer, um, and then we're going to turn them a color. Okay? Now, this is the perfect example that uh, we can really demonstrate move in black. So, for example, if I just go ahead and I record this, to a queue, we'll call it no MIB, no move in black, okay? We turn it off, we bring it on, what happens as it fades in? Well, as we see, uh, not only does the position fade in as it moves, but the color also fades in over that whole time, and that's usually not the look that you're going for, okay? Um, so what do we do? Well, there's a few ways to do it. If I'm just doing like a simple like thing for like live music here, then I honestly don't typically use the move in black function. So what I would do is I would grab those lights, I would take them to full, you probably should use the palette, but the preset, but I'm not. Then you would take them to red, okay? Ooh, the center one's not in the red palette? Oh, it's only in the mix red. Hmm. Hmm. Anyways, <laughs> things you find in the demo show file. Um, so take them, red, position, that's what we're doing. Okay, and then the last thing I do is I turn it off, and then this is just making it move in black without using the move in black function. Okay, record, call it MIB1, and there's going to be some downsides to this approach, and then boom, bring up the intensity, record, move in black too. And of course, with anything, you can always adjust the timings on these, right? So now what we get is basically the light moves into place, it's colored, um, and then we would set it to automatically follow. Let's just do that so you can see that here. Q list values, edit mode, instead of go, we like follow. Um, wait and follow are slightly different. Follow, wait, follow, Wait, that's terrible definition wise. You shouldn't use the word in the definition. Follow means that the previous cue comes in, fades in through all of its time, and then there's the wait time, right? So if I just do like follow zero, typically that works great. Now I hit play, moves into place, turns red, and then the second cue it turns on. And so the amount of time that it takes to execute Q1, basically the shortest it can be is as fast as that light can move into position and into color. Okay, so if it's like a really big, heavy moving light that isn't super fast, you might need a second or two if it's moving a long distance. If it's a small, snappy wash light, then you might be able to do a half or a one second fade and be able to get away with it, which helps in a live show because, of course, you know, you hit this button because you're getting ready to, to highlight the lead singer. Maybe you had time uh, to wait for this maybe not in fact maybe you even move the lights and you don't have an auto follow and you hit go when the signal cues on right okay 
So even this this uh, version is not really perfect. It's it's good, but if we go just as an example and play something, let's grab these sample cues here. Okay, woohoo! Isn't that flashy? And I'm trying to pause it so it doesn't continue on. Because are these set to auto follow? They're not. Cool. Okay. So, um, so if we go ahead back to our for our bank, and now we use this cue. Here's the problem with this cue, right? If the light is on when you go to fire this cue, what happens? Well, the lights turn red and they move into position. Oh, but they weren't on in that queue. Gosh darn it. Well, what they're supposed to do, let's get back to there. Get a queue with these fixtures in it. Maybe the next queue. I think they're in there now. Now they're up in the sky. Okay, that makes it a better example because now those fixtures, those Artista Vinci's are up in the sky. So then we hit go, and you see, oh, they start moving and start turning red as they're turning off, and then they get into place and they come up. So that's not perfect either, right? Um, so, and I'm showing you the old school ways of doing this first, because sometimes it's just plain faster to do the old school ways if you're only doing like a couple cues in a cue list. It's just really quick. So what would we have to do to fix that? Well, what we would have to do is add a third cue. So this time we would just add a cue, take them to zero, record, and this time I'm just going to record cue 0.5, enter, okay? We go to our cue list values, we set a follow of zero seconds for cue one now, and now Q.5, Q half that we just made that only turns the light off, that can go as fast as we want that light to turn off. Okay, so like say I just do a half second fade. Maybe I do a one second fade, make it a little slower. And now the lights are, oops, I gotta clear the programmer or stop the cue, that's what I gotta do. So now the lights are back in their place, they're up in the air. We hit the cue, they turn off they move into place, then they turn on. Okay, now what about the console's built-in move in black function? I would argue, honestly, if you're just doing like really quick, simple, like like I do a lot of corporate shows and, and music stuff, and in those types of shows, I do a lot of small cue lists, two, three cues in them. I just do often just do the move in black stuff myself, okay? Um, but what if you wanted to have the console do it for you. If you're doing a longer, more theatrical style cue list, and you know that in every cue, you just want every fixture to, to move in black without you having to do it, then here's how that goes. Okay, so we take our fixtures. Woo. We go ahead and, oops, I guess, stop the cue. We go ahead and there's a few prerequisites. There's really one prerequisite for moving black. And that prerequisite is that um, you have to have had intensity in the queue um, before there's intensity out. And then, and then the queue can go. And let me just double check the manual, make sure I said that right, because it's the wording on that you have to say it really carefully. Yes. So as the manual says, it must have an intensity value of zero in that cue list before it's going to auto mark or auto move in black. And of course, we have to turn the mark function on. Here's how it works. So we would take these lights and we have to prerequisite is they have to be in a queue at zero. So let's go ahead and do it. MIB two. Enter. So, um, we've recorded the first cue with them off. This is really key. Then, we turn them back on and we make them do whatever we want them to do. So, again, just for sake of repetition, back to Mix Red, back to Lead Singer. And this time I'll also take the gobo out because I want to. Um, and we'll go ahead and record that to our second cue. We'll play it without turning on the moving black so we get what we get, right? It turns off and then as it turns on, it moves 
It does look like who wants to be a millionaire, but that's probably not what we want in this context. So I just go ahead and I go to the options as I did there. Turn on the mark. Now there's mark per queue list and mark per queue. Um, mark per queue list is what people use the most often. That means that anything in this queue list is going to uh, move in black. So now we start it again. We'll hit play. I'm just going to select one of them so we can see it. And then see it's moving now. So now in that space, after the queue faded in all the way, it went ahead and moved. Can you customize this? Yes, you can. I'm glad you asked. So you can go into the menu here. Um, and in queue settings, I believe, yeah, mark queue right here. How long does it delay before it starts that auto mark? How long does it fade? So if you have a show where you've got a lot of time and you want things to move very slowly, you could increase that. If you're working rock and roll, but you're still using some moving black, you might take these and make them like really small. Um, and, and the lights might swing kind of fast. Okay. Um, but use that with caution because... The idea here is to be subtle, right? Um, now, what are the blind sides of the move in black function? Great question. So say we want to do a who wants to be a millionaire look, okay? Um, that's one of those areas where, honestly, with the mark function, it doesn't work well. And by the way, the mark per queue um, is pretty much the same thing. You just go and you hit this little... Uh, oops. You hit this little mark toggle, you get this M right here, and then when the queue list is set to mark per queue, it only marks for those queues. Okay, I, I honestly have never ever actually used that. I have always used it for the whole queue list, if anything, or just not at all. Anywho, blind spots. Who wants to be a millionaire? So, say you've got the lights, and actually this is perfect. You, you watch a show like Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, or the other day we were watching the... Uh, Jeopardy, uh, my wife had the, the Jeopardy Masters tournament on, and they have these movers up in the air, in a gobo, right? And then what we want to do basically is have them come all the way down and then turn off, right? And then when they finish turning off, we do want them to go back up again to their home position and turn back on. If you've ever noticed that, who wants to be a millionaire? They'll be like, do 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 do, and they went right, and then they turn off. And they weren't staying down when they turned off. They went back up to be brought up. I think they came back on maybe at a queue at a later point. Maybe at when the, the answer was revealed to the question, something like that. But they didn't stay down and then answer, turn on, go back up. They, they came down, they turned off, right? Um, and so that's the crux of what we're doing here. So say we're doing that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, bring them, have them at full. Then we're going to, I mean, they, they already were at full, but we're going to continue that. It's actually not necessary. Um, take them down, right, to the lead singer. Then we'll go ahead in this case and record that to our first cue. Then we'll go ahead and turn them off. Record our second cue. Okay, so it's kind of almost anti-move in black. Um, and then, uh, and, and, and where the mark really wouldn't work in this is say we wanted, just out of curiosity, actually, we'll, we'll just, never mind. We'll get that to it. So, who wants to be like, comes down, comes down, then what? Then we want to go back up to where we were. And so in this case, I'm in different cue lists. So I would either have to release it, but if I went from where I was right now, Okay, so say I'm here, right? The lights sweep down. We turn them off. We would have that auto follow just like we did before. Now we have to stop the queue in order to bring the lights back up, but that actually doesn't work because if we release the queue, then as the lights are coming up, they also fade into the on position, right? So this is a place where you want to, even if you're gonna release the queue, uh, and go back to your old queue list, you still want to go take them. And I don't know which preset this is. So I am just going to honestly load the pan tilt. Okay. And I'm going to now record that in a new queue right here. Okay. So now the lights can come down, sweep down, 
turn off. Again, we could do this all on auto follows. Now they've swung back up. I know you probably can't see that in the visualizer. And now we could stop it or bring the intensity back on or whatever. Okay. Now, Mark would not work with this cue list, right? Because we bring it in and we want to see the sweep. But what if, let's just say for a what if, we were starting here and we wanted something to mark um, on that cue, but something else not to mark. Well, we couldn't do that, right? If we wanted them to say change color in black and then do the move in black um, or the not move in black, do the sweep separately, we couldn't do that with the mark function. That would have to be queued manually. But other than that, especially when you have a lot of cues, when you have a theatrical cue list, mark can be really helpful. It can save you a lot of time, a lot of thinking, because you don't have to pre-plan for the next cue while you're in the last cue. Um, the console is going to do that for you. So if you enjoyed this, be sure to subscribe here for more Onyx tips and tricks and all that goodness. And if you need any Onyx gear and you're in the U.S., your only source should be Learn Stage Lighting Gear. Why? Because we're authorized dealers. Not only for that, but for anything else lighting you need, and we're the Onyx experts. So come to the experts. We would love to help you out. we got all, all the Onyx stuff, custom cases, all that jazz. We'd love to help you. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.